Every year, villages across the country are pitted against each other for any number of honours and awards. Which has the best pub, the best cricket team, which is the best kept village? In Kent, that's a title which could easily be shared by a number of contenders. Among them is Pluckley, the setting for the television series about life in idyllic rural England, The Darling Buds of May. But as well as vying for the best kept village title, Pluckley lays claim to a more dubious honour. Among Pluckley's local landmarks are Devil's Bush, Fright Corner, and Screaming Woods. As the place names suggest, the village has its darker side. Frightening shadowy figures and mournful apparitions are some of the strange sightings which have been reported over the years. And ghostly screams have been heard coming from the thick woodland that engulfs the village. If the stories are to be believed, this is the land of the undead. There are 12 ghosts in Pluckley, plus one or two more that have uh, shown on the scene recently. Uh, for a place this size, that is quite phenomenal. As far as villages go, this has got the most, undoubtedly the most haunted village in England. This quintessentially English hamlet has indeed earned the title of the country's most haunted village. But can there really be two white ladies, a red lady and a monk roaming through Pluckley? These are questions that divide the village. Some dismiss the stories as pure fantasy and warn that they could turn the village into a tourist trap. But to others, the ghostly tales are chilling reality. I was coming back from Betherston with babies and the grandchildren. It was right, it was past midnight. We got to Pluckley, or the poor Pluckley Pinnock, and we see this bright light coming towards us. We could see it was a coach and uh, horses. We might as well just slowed down and uh, you know, we looked and looked again because we couldn't believe our eyes. I mean, we've been up and down the roads loads of times never ever seen anything before. There was nobody on it, couldn't see anybody on it. And then it just disappeared into the night. I mean, I've heard of uh, Pluckley being haunted, but until we actually see that, I, I didn't really believe it until then. But I do believe that there are such things now. Personally, I find nothing far-fetched about the possibilities of a haunted haunting by a coach and horses here. This is the typical village, and it was on a main coaching route in the old days between Smarden and Charing. The countryside was ideal for highwaymen. And I was walking down the road, and this figure appeared in the main corner. And I thought, God, what's this? And I, I froze more or less for a minute. A figure in a long black coat with a collar right up. Looked if it had riding boots on. And it went across the road, through the edge, and oh, I just ran. I just tore off indoors. When I got in, I had goose pimples as big as eggs on my arms. Well, I think I see the high women. I can do anything and nothing will frighten me. No one will frighten me. But that certainly did that night. I have heard a story of the highwayman of Pluckley who fell out with his fellow rogues in the village and was driven out of the village towards Fright Corner where there was a tree standing. He was pinned to it, terrible scream, bloody blades, and so ended the life of that man. But he continued to live in the village as a ghost. But in Pluckley, it's not just the remote country roads that have been the source of supernatural tales. Gloria Atkins knew nothing of the village's ghostly reputation when she arrived in 1994. When I first saw the blacksmith arms, as it was, it was all boarded up, no lights, very spooky, and we viewed it by candlelight. But I liked it. I thought, well, I'm sure I could make a go of it as a tea rooms. The old pub had originally been a forge, dating back to the 16th century. And it was a lunchtime. And Lynn is my assistant. And we were sitting in my kitchen. My daughter had been down, and she has one of these baby monitors. And it was plugged into the kitchen. Oh, no! What's that? The transmitter was plugged in upstairs. And all of a sudden, we heard footsteps coming over it. 
I mean, it was very definite footsteps. Gloria looked at myself and I looked at her and I said, oh my God, somebody's broken in. So we both went upstairs and of course there was nothing there. I can't explain it because I really don't know what it was. Uh, it sounded like a person, but there was nobody up there. So it, it must have been something, but what it was, I can't say. There's been numerous things, confusing, unexplainable, odd little things really that I can't understand. For instance, there was the problem with Estelle. I went to bed early that night, and it must have been about 10 I went to bed. I went to sleep, and I sort of woke up for no apparent reason. And I opened my eyes, and I just saw this figure at the bottom of my bed, like a shadow of a little boy about, I don't know, five or six, something like that. If it was a dream, there's no way I've ever had a dream that realistic, and it was just definitely couldn't have been a dream. Even the dog has got her suspicions. She doesn't like going up the stairs. She gets very nervous, she barks, growls, all her coat and the back goes up. There's nothing there. And then also she, she would bark at something in the corner of the kitchen, near the ceiling. But there's nothing there. It's difficult to understand why Pluckley should hold the title of England's most haunted village, but the answer may lie in its history. The village of Pluckley is mentioned in the Doomsday Book and goes back long before that. It's steeped in history. The more superstitious might argue that Pluckley's entry in the Doomsday Book, on page 13, may have something to do with its unfortunate reputation, but not all the stories are linked to historical figures. Taxi driver Raymond Breakspear picked up his most unusual fare in Pluckley. Well, after two o'clock in the morning, it's up my couple of girls smash it and I come out the night up. Took them the head gone, drop them off. Coming back to Asher, came back through Pratley, that must have been 2.45, 3 o'clock in the morning. A guy sort of appeared from the side of the road, flagged me down. Well, that, that's a bonus. You know, you don't get a problem, get a return fare at that time in the morning. Uh, right, well, that's all amazing. Uh, which way have we got? If you got in the cab, where'd he go? If you didn't get in the cab, then... Well, am I going nuts or what, you know? If the door had opened, I'd have heard it. The interior light would have come on. There's no way that someone could have physically opened the door and get out without me knowing. If you want an explanation, you've got to find one. I haven't got one. Pluckley made it into the Guinness Book of Records thanks to its extraordinary collection of ghost stories. One former parish priest, the Reverend Pittock, even conducted exorcism in the village. Who has the power of death? Let evil spirits be driven out, and may the angel of peace enter in. But the present vicar, the Reverend Michael Higgs, is a skeptic. I think there were one or two uh, rumours perhaps before the war, but after the war, um, it seemed to take off then. And uh, I suspect it might have had something to do with the tourist trade. I definitely see that I put it that way, I don't think. I see it. And I don't care who says I didn't, I did. Okay, I accept that. They have seen something, but what is it? Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's wrong just to jump to conclusions. Uh, I think one should have a more analytical approach to why, ha why, why you, you think you've seen something. Well, it wasn't my imagination, because my husband see it as well. The stories of the ghost of Pluckley that are fixed in my mind are those which were told and reinforced by people who lived in the village way back in 1984. But since that time, a lot of people have retracted, possibly by a bit of pressure put to bear on them to keep sightseers out of the village. There are no ghosts in Pluckley. The only ghost that I believe exists here in Pluckley and in this church is the Holy Ghost. Local people remain divided. Some are trying to rid Pluckley of its title as Britain's most haunted village. Others are convinced they have witnessed the paranormal. 
Whatever the truth, the reports of sightings continue. This year, neither Pluckley nor any other place makes the record books with the title of England's most haunted village. You'll understand there's a problem measuring this kind of thing. Phantoms just won't stand up and be counted. Good night.